This happened sometime to my mom while she was visiting my granddad in the hospital back in 2016. This was at least a week before my granddad from my mom's side passed away in 2016. My mom was vis visiting him for a couple of days and almost every day she would go and visit him. Sometimes she would have to be home and couldn't go to visit him at times due to her being busy, having errands to do, and etc. Sometimes this has been a little bit of an issue as paying to park at the hospital is crazy expensive. It costs almost like $3 an hour. And I mean, it really adds up since my mom is usually there a couple hours at the time. This had become an issue and we've been struggling money-wise since then. And although we are trying to do what we can do. Although this has been a bit of an issue regarding of what happened with my granddad. It's been a hurt and hard for everyone. Now, one of my visits, my mom was talking to a doctor. And yes, this took place sometime before my granddad died. Sometime a week before then. It was around maybe beginning of February, late January, when my mom was talking to her doctor. Not really her doctor, but her grand, but her granddad, but granddad, but her dad's doctor. He said that he wasn't going to make it another week or so, and that the best thing they could do is make sure if he has any grandkids that they go and say goodbye to him before he dies. Now, they weren't really sure when that would be, but they said he would live at most a week. So at this time, my mom ended up talking to the doctor for a while and stayed with my granddad a few times. Now, however, though, I did text her and ask her when she was going to come home as I was home already from school and I was home alone. My dad was already at work and my brother and I just got home not too long at that time. My mom said that she would be there for at least a few more hours and that she would be home as soon as possible. As my that my mom was sitting in the room with my granddad, she heard what seemed to be, be some little, little foot tapping noises. She looked over to think that maybe the stethoscope hanging up somewhere was the sound of it. And shockingly, it kind of was. She went over to it, but saw nothing pushing it, so there could be no reason why it's moving. She was just... puzzled. As she was puzzled, she ended up going over for to my granddad, who was asleep, and she ended up saying to him a lot of things. He had been hallucinating, so he said he had saw a child walking by and saying hi to him. Now, my mom was confused on that. He was hallucinating, yes, but this was getting really messed up. So, my mom ended up looking over, but couldn't see really much. So, as of that, she ended up just being puzzled. So, she ended up deciding just to maybe ignore it or something and just move on. However, though, it didn't stop there. Because something really strange began happening. My mom was maybe nearly half asleep for a minute when she woke up to hearing the tapping sound from the stethoscope again. This time the stethoscope thing was on the ground. What even pushed it to be on the ground was very confusing. So my mom went over to pick it up. But then a few minutes when she had her back turned to it, it got knocked on the floor again. My granddad was asleep, so in visiting hours were almost over, so my mom had to get ready to go home. She hugged my granddad and said that she would be back the next day, day to see him. But as she got her stuff to walk out the door, she saw what seemed to be someone running past the hospital door. This honestly confused my mom, wondering why was there a child running? She ended up walking out of the hospital room and ended up looking to see that there was somebody buddy there. It seemed to be a young kid, maybe five, and she seemed to be staring blankly at my mom. My mom asked her if where her parents were and that if she was lost, but there was no response from the little girl. She ended up having this little giggle. It sounded demonic. Nick eventually when it got deeper 
My mom immediately turned her back and ran down out to the elevator, but she couldn't see the little girl anymore. She didn't stop panicking until she got out of the hospital, but as soon as she got home, she knew she was safe. My mom still has no idea if this was paranormal or something really messed up. But one thing my mom wasn't sure is that maybe that source of what caused the stethoscope to fall was that little girl. Even if it was, how would that girl manage to do so? For some context, this actually happened to one of my teachers sometime in 2017. Now, for her name, I think we'll call her Nora, as Nora was one of the teachers for science. She was in the hospital as she had somehow had her surgery for a kidney transplant. She lost one kidney sometime maybe about Oh, maybe two or three years ago due to alcohol poisoning. But of course, that was unfortunate as she had to have one kidney removed to save her life. Somehow, someone had found a kidney that had her that could be compatible with her and that she decides to go for the kidney transplant. Now, since she was one of the science teachers, she did some studying and research on them and about kidney transplants just so she could understand what to expect and all that. When she gets to the doors of the hospital, she had to take at least a couple weeks off from, from working so that way she can go and get this. Now this transplant was taking place sometime in April so school is only going to be out in another two months. Plus with the exams going on the way. Nora had to go and get this kidney transplant over and done with. By the time she reaches to the hospital, the doctors gave her some medicine and eventually she eventually falls asleep. After the process, her kidney was re replaced her kidney transplant surgery went pretty smooth and but she had to stay for at least a week or so so that way she can heal from the surgery just in case if there was any infections or something wrong with the transplanted kidney. She was alone in one of her quarters on the hospital floor in one of the recovery rooms, and this took place sometime maybe in the afternoon. Now, the hallway was dead quiet, although it was around maybe dinner time, so most people have gone to eat dinner. Nora already ate. So she decided to go down the hallway and explore, but not to be too far from her room. As she was walking down, she saw some guy staring blankly at the front doors of the hospital, or at least the hallway where, where she was in from the stairwell. He started smiling really creepily, and staring at her really creepily really made her freak out. Nora tried her best to ignore him by looking at her phone, basically scrolling through Instagram and whatnot, when he started banging on the door. Catching her attention, he demanded that she lets him in. Seeing that she had no idea if this was a patient or not, he didn't look like one. So she ended up going back to her room, but she had to take the long way so the creepy guy doesn't follow her. Eventually, she got back to her room and locked her door. Door and she ended up calling the nurse and say there was somebody on the hallway demand to be let in. The nurse said that they would bring secure, a security over to find out about this man. When the nurse and security arrived at Nora's door, Nora opened the door and explained to them about what the man looked like and that he wanted to be coming into her, her, her place, her floor. Of course, the nurses were curious and asked if it was a cancer patient or something, but it wasn't. He didn't even dress like one, is what Nora described it. Of course, the security guards were on the top on the floors that Nora was on, making sure that he didn't even try to come in. With Nora just sitting in her room, obviously shocked and shooken by what happened, she fell asleep. A few minutes later, she woke up to a sudden banging coming from her door. It was around 9 p.m. and there was loud banging coming from the outside of her room. 
the man started screaming as if enraged. She ended up calling the nurse again saying that there was something going on and someone was banging on the door. She said that she would alert security. Nora was obviously terrified about this man, thinking he could break down the door any second. She got very worried and scared for her life. Eventually, the screaming stopped when two whose sounds of what seemed to be security guards and even a police officer telling him to step away from the door and etc. As Nora was kind of contemplating on opening it, the security guard opened up the door as he had the keys and said that the man had been taken away from the, from the place by the police. Now, the security guards checks on Nora, making sure she was okay, and the nurse does the same. Eventually, Nora said that this guy was the same one that she reported earlier, wanting to get in on her second floor of the, well, recovery room. Now, the police had arrested this man, and it turns out that this man has been arrested for assaults, as he had assaulted a couple people inside the hospital many years ago. And of course, he had been released on good behavior. But of course, he was reset to jail, and Nora has not seen him since. For a bit of background information, this actually happened to one of my neighbors, which will call him Mark at the time of the story. Now, this happened sometime in 2017, when Mark, along with his best friend, which will call him him Jake, were pretty good buddies at the time. They liked to go to really creepy places, such as abandoned buildings, creepy places in the forests, woods, even then sometimes in the countryside and etc. Mark and Jake had been best friends for about 15 years and this took place sometime when they used to live in my neighborhood in my hometown. I will not say the name of where I was at the time, but he and and but Mark and Jake were pretty good friends. Of course one day Mark's girlfriend was out going to do some stuff with her friends as it was a girls night. Since Mark didn't have anything planned, he asked Jake on what they should do. Jake decided that they would go to another town that had an abandoned hospital. The abandoned town was about, about maybe 40 minutes away from the house where, where they lived, so they drove over there to see it. Now, at the time he met this story, Jake, along with Mark, did pass by an old-looking hospital. The hospital had been shut down since 1994 and it had been closed for a long time. They decided that they would go check it out and see if they could find anything interesting to do. So Jake, along with Mark, snuck into the hospital through the back door as most of the doors and windows were boarded up due to teenagers sneaking inside the hospital. Now, the reason why the hospital shut down was because of bankruptcy and it wasn't really a popular town. The town was pretty much abandoned as not a lot of people lived there there, and not a lot of places were in business anymore. The only time you would get to see all that or civilization were some teenagers and etc. Mark and Jake somehow went to the behind of the hospital, abandoned one, and took a look inside the house, well the hospital. They looked around, but they couldn't seem to find anybody, so they opened up the doors and they ended up walking inside the hospital. They went up to eat, walked around each floor and finding graffiti with some trash and some bottles, most of them being beer bottles, but you get the idea. They walked up the stairs to the second floor, where there was a dark hallway, only illuminated by the sunlight that was in the distance, flashing from the window. They ended up going over to that window and looked around but couldn't find anybody in there. At the time, they were confused, but at the same time, they wanted to do something really fun. As Mark, along with, with Jake, were exploring the hospital, checking out what rooms they would have been in, when all of a sudden they heard a loud scream. They didn't even know if it was, was real or not, but it sounded like a woman screaming. They couldn't see or hear 
the woman within a few minutes as they it was only the present for a second. Now at the time they were really nervous so they ended up grabbing their stuff and ended up running out of the hospital. When they got to the car they looked to see that there was this man wearing a hood and he seemed to be staring at them. Mark along with Jake drove their cars all the way back to their hometown, but they took the long way to make sure that they weren't being followed. Thankfully, they were not being followed, but they still had no idea why this guy was there. Could he have murdered somebody in there? Probably why they heard them her screaming. Those were the questions that Mark and Jake don't know, and they haven't been back at the hospital, the abandoned one, since, and they don't ever plan on returning there. They're not sure if that guy is still there or not, but they have a feeling that he mostly still is there.